Now let's get to some big news today about Oregon's Measure 110 and what Democrats hope to change in the upcoming legislative session. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle admit 110 is flawed, but they have different opinions on how to fix it. It should come as no surprise that the Democrats' plan does not go nearly as far as Republicans want, especially when it comes to recriminalizing drug use and the strings attached to that reintroduction of that crime. Blair Best has our story. Tuesday at the state capitol, lawmakers met for the fifth time to talk about Oregon's addiction and public safety crisis ahead of the February session. The attendance alone showed just how pressing these issues are. I'm going to remind everybody it's an ongoing process. The Joint Committee on Addiction and Community Safety Response formed in September. The bipartisan group, co-chaired by Senator Kate Lieber, is now revealing a controversial proposal that would end parts of Measure 110 and recriminalize possession of a legal drugs like fentanyl. With fentanyl, it is killing people and we need to make sure that we continue to prevent that. They're also looking to expand treatment options, break down barriers drug users face when seeking residential care, and increase the amount of time a sobering or treatment facility can hold someone who's intoxicated. And I believe this is a this helps take immediate action to some of the problems we're seeing now and is a better path than what we were doing previously. As for public safety, the proposal changes Oregon law to make it easier to prosecute drug dealers. It ups the penalties for drug dealing within a public park, near homeless shelters and treatment centers, and increases funding for treatment and staff recruiting. Some groups, like the ACLU of Oregon, see this as a step in the wrong direction. This reflects a massive failure of leadership. A failure? Interesting, okay. And they are not working on real solutions. They are working on failed policies of the war on drugs, which we know don't solve addiction or homelessness. Look, I don't think that we should criminalize addiction. Like, I, I'm not, this is not my, you know, if I'm going to lead with the values here, but we've got to have all the tools in our tool belt to address what's happening on the streets of or in Oregon, right? And we did remove a tool, and we are simply giving that tool back to the police Addiction is a health care issue. It is not a criminal issue. Now, Republicans who sit on this committee also pushed back today on many of their proposed policies and argued that the timeline doesn't reflect enough urgency. Now, last week, House Republicans proposed a similar bill, but their main focus is ending Measure 110 and offering treatment instead of jail time. I also want to point out here that many of these proposed policies talk of refining the inner workings at treatment centers and sobering centers. But let's step back here. Oregon doesn't even have enough of these centers as it is. And building more, we're told, will take time. But on a more immediate note, the governor is expected to declare a fentanyl emergency in Portland any day now. In Salem, Blair Best, KGW News. Thank you, Blair. Let's take a minute now to drill down on that recriminalization idea. Again, this is just the initial proposal. It will be introduced in the legislature, but it's far from set in stone. The proposal released today would create a Class C misdemeanor for possession of drugs like fentanyl. But before someone is booked on that charge, police would have to offer that person a deflection program. So what is that exactly? Well, it's described as a behavioral health intervention focused on helping individuals into drug treatment, supporting their addiction recovery, and connecting them with peer support. If they accept that and go through the program, that Class C misdemeanor goes away. And if they decline, then the person can be booked and prosecuted on that charge. A Class C misdemeanor, by the way, is the lowest of the misdemeanors, but carries a potential of up to 30 days in jail and a potential fine of over $1,200. It's the same class of crime as a petty theft. Democrats also say that if possession is recriminalized, officers would have the legal authority to confiscate illegal drugs, authority that is unclear right now with Measure 110. That means that officers could curb open-air drug use by simply taking the drugs away, they say, and potentially use the misdemeanor tool as the next step toward prevention. Republicans have blasted this proposal, as Blair said, saying it's not going nearly far enough, saying that the Class C crime is much too weak. The president of the District Attorney's Association of Oregon says the proposal is a good starting point, but is not there yet. And then there's this from the president of the Oregon State Sheriff's Association, Crook County Sheriff John Gottney, writing, We find the low-level C misdemeanor penalty and the requirement for officers to offer a deflection program instead of arrest to be a complex and resource-intensive approach that we are unable to support. 
I also traded messages with Max Williams, the former head of Oregon's prison system and a three term lawmaker. We talked just about a half hour ago. He's spearheading the threat to start an initiative petition to ask voters to throw out Measure 110 this fall if the legislature does not go far enough with their reforms. Williams wrote anything short of reclassifying deadly drugs as a class A misdemeanor crime will be inadequate to effectively steer more people into more treatment more quickly. The response from law enforcement says it all. It's unworkable, it won't motivate people to seek treatment, and it's overly complicated. We know Class A works because it worked before with drug courts. So, there you go on that one. What do you think about the proposal that lawmakers are considering next month? Do you think it goes too far? Maybe not far enough? Let us know, will you? Shoot us an email. The address is the story at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail, 503-226-5090.